it was still really hard to get together with anybody else in practice, you know, if we wanted to have a band or something. So we just kind of naturally came together and were like, hey, we should be a band because I can rehearse with you after the baby goes to bed. My dad is a country musician, so I grew up listening to guitars, pedal steel guitars, what my dad plays mostly, and country music from the time I was like, well, from the time I was born. Uh, and I would, I remember going to bed at night. And my, I would hear, I would listen to my dad playing, practicing pedal steel downstairs. And so, can you imagine as a, as a young girl for years and years, just going to sleep with those melodies floating upstairs and kind of working their way. All right, you guys ready? And I know our baby's sleeping I can feel him in my heartbeat I can hear him in the silence like a song Softly breathing Heartbeat At the time I was um, you know, 15, 16, able to drive I had a pretty good uh, collection of songs um, and I I honestly, when I when I think back to that time, I feel like music and releasing that first record quite literally saved my life. Like it stopped me from going down a path of self-destruction. And it gave me something to be proud of within myself. Something that I did this on my own. Every waking hour. Now I feel Beside me as I lay here in this darkness, wrap myself around those moments and hold on, on, on softly breathing. Until very recently, and maybe even in my lifetime, everybody believed that music was poetry and poetry was music. I mean, we all started out chanting around campfires in the Stone Age, and there was no difference. At some point in the course of Ames history, and it's just recently, I think, with people like Jay Perry and Nate Logston, the music scene and the poetry scene merged in this town. And so, uh, shows that used to be separate and audiences that used to be separate and performers that used to be separate we're all just one big family now they all say the time is fleeting there to blink and now we're 50 and no matter how we fight it marches on we have a lot of talent in Ames. We've always had a lot of talent in Ames. That's never going to change about this town. It's, it's I think, part of the culture of a college town is just people get music lessons, uh, people play in bands, people are creative, people learn how to sing. But that talent is really sort of pointless until you build a community around it until you uh, build a, a sort of, there's a family around the open mic at the space. Um, there, there are groups of people who always come to the same music venues. It raises the visibility 
of music in Ames. It lets people know what's going on in the music culture. It helps build community. We bond at these shows, the performers and the audience and the organizers, we all bond at these shows. Uh, and it's also a fundraiser. So without Maximum Ames, uh, I think the year ahead of us would look very different and a little bit bleaker than it does. Right now, things are, are looking pretty good. Thank you.